All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 16th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2022. I'm trying to make this video in 15 minutes or less. Anyway, uh, we have over here uh, a case where we have a... at that and see what it says. So we're going to listen to this young man first. Horrible. But I will say as a disclaimer, I like the NIV and the NLT versions, and I'll explain why. And I will go back to a really quick teaching about the King James Version, its origin, and why it's so important. But I wouldn't give it quite the uh, credit that only, but why at the same time, it is my quite to the extreme to say they're all bad because it uh, pretty much eliminates the work of the Holy Spirit in your life and teaching you into all truth. In new versions, NIV, NLT, ESV, but then there are some versions like the Passion or the message, which I would say are so far off that they're just garbage, right? And I wouldn't uh, trust them at all. I don't, I don't want to have to constantly be reading them, be like, this is like a whole new Bible here. It doesn't make sense, you know. Uh, but the instances in the NIV and NLT are, you can find them for sure. And I'll show you an example side by side in a moment, but uh, they are not that. Switch over to and explain. So here we are on B11. Only a hundred red. It does written thirty-five. Uh, Eleven red. books in my Here we have. I'm gonna. I'm gonna slide this over here. There was. Okay. Let me point out something really quickly. Do not pay attention to the Apocrypha. The, their only books of any value in that are the books of Maccabees. They're of historical value. They give you some insight into some of the fulfillments of the prophecies of Daniel. But the, the Jews never, ever, ever have recognized the, uh, the Apocrypha as inspired by God. And he, this man just does not know what he's talking about. The reason that it was present in the King James and then taken out is because the publishers didn't want to waste the paper. It is not inspired by God. Anybody that reads it will know that immediately, that it has the Holy Spirit in them. Excuse me for a second. All right, here we go. You have the King James Version on the left, NIV in the middle, NLT, right? King James Verse came first. NIV is a modern version, but it's not as modern as NLT, which is the newest out of the three, of course. So we'll read it along. Jesus met the woman at the well, told her he is the Messiah. Now, this is important because this is the first time he actually told anyone he's the Messiah. Despite the speculation... Those like his mother Mary who knew, right? Uh, he had not yet told anybody that he is, in fact, the Messiah. But he told a woman at the well. I don't think that's a uh, coincidence. I don't believe God does anything... Uh, by haphazard means.
I believe it's deliberate. So here's Jesus himself talking to a woman at the well. And she goes into the town starting at verse 29, right about there. Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Then Jesus talks to his disciples for, during these verses and goes back to these people. It's the, the, the Samaritans. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for saying of the woman, for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that I ever did. Notice that it's very clear she testified to them. Notice that she says, is not this the Christ? She is not asking them a question. I can guarantee you that. She goes there convicted. because that's what the scriptures say he cannot every translation that he's looking at here has it translated as a question there's a reason it's translated as a question he says it's not a question she's not asking a question well this is the greek this is the actual text of the scripture, and there's no textual variance here. You see here, I've got the, the New King James, or the King James says, is, is not this the Christ? New King James, could this be the Christ? A New American Standard, uh, this is not the Christ, is it? ESV, can this be the Christ? Young's literal, uh, is, is this the Christ? All questions, why? But he says it's not a question. Because there's a word here in the Greek, this word right here, meti, meti. What's meti? It's a, as you can read over my head, it's an interrogative particle. In other words, it introduces a question and it expects a negative answer. It's, in other words, it, it denotes a possibility, but doesn't really expect it to be affirmed. In other words, could this possibly be the Christ? Which is why it's often translated, as you can see over my head there at the bottom of the section, perhaps, perhaps this is the Christ. But it doesn't expect an affirmative answer as, yes, this is definitely the Christ. No. That's not what it means. That's not what the Bible says. Now, this young man does not generally care what the Bible teaches. Let's see. Yeah. Let's put it back here so you can take a look at his face again. <laughs> does not generally care for what the Bible teaches. That's his shtick. His main point, apparently, on his website is to tell women that they have every right to stand in the pulpit and teach and preach and exercise authority over men. Which is how I got to this, because I engaged in a, a few comments with him. And this man is utterly ignorant. He cannot respond. He does not know anything about your Greek. He does not know anything about translation. I doubt if he's ever studied another language at all. Otherwise, he would not be so ignorant. And the idea that the NLT is even a legitimate translation, which it's not, is a very, very sloppy paraphrase. Utterly absurd. And I ran across that the other day because a lot of pastors in the Nazarenes are now using the NLT, and it's terrible. It's terrible. It's not a translation. It is a loose paraphrase. <sighs> the NIV is a conservative paraphrase. It's not a literal translation either. If you want an accurate translation of the Bible... Buy yourself a King James or a New King James or a New American Standard. Even the ESV is not consistently accurate, not consistently literal. Every once in a while, 
they'll just kick the can down the road. Sometimes it appears they deliberately obfuscate or fog the scripture because they don't want to make a controversial translation. The ESV is actually a modest rework of the RSV, that liberal translation of the Bible that came from 1952, I believe. Uh, the, the famous that was famous for in Isaiah the prophecy of a virgin conceiving and bearing a child, they translated it, a young woman shall conceive and bear a child. That's how accurate that is. That's one of the things they fixed in the ESV. But some of the other things, the RSV is actually more accurate than the ESV. So I do not recommend it. It's better than an NIV. It's better than a uh, the Southern Baptist NIV, the uh, Christian Standard Bible. Uh, yeah. Um, everybody, see, all these publishers want their own version because of the money. They don't have to pay copyright fees to, to publish somebody else's version. The very idea you can copyright the Word of God is a crime. It's a sin against God. Wickedness, the love of money, is the root of all manner of evil. And it's true today. And it's true on YouTube. You, true on YouTube. So, beware of scoundrels. Beware of young people that call themselves prophets or apostles, or old people, call themselves apostles, prophets, teachers, when in fact they are, they are utterly ignorant of what they're talking about and have no business teaching. As we read in the scriptures, let's see, where is it? I did look it up. James. Well, I'll do it off the top of my head because I don't have it. Let not many of you become teachers, brother, knowing that as such we'll receive a stricter judgment because we all err, we all err in many things. That's from memory, so it probably won't match up with your version exactly. But beware false teachers. Learn how to read the Bible. Read it in context and don't go by whims. Oh, I think the Spirit's saying this. The Spirit of God directs you to what the Bible is actually teaching in context. He's the one who inspired it. He knows what it said. He got it right. And when somebody says that it's not a question, she's not asking a question. When the text says she is asking a question and she is not sure herself because she's expecting a negative answer, well, you know the person that's telling you something different doesn't know what they're talking about. Beware of bad teachers along with false teachers, ignorant teachers. 